school. I'm sure you read uh, John Yates' interview in the Sunday Telegraph uh, with interest. Uh, did it make you raise an eyebrow? Well, probably two eyebrows, uh, John, because I was extraordinarily surprised by the fact that John Yates has not replied to the letter that I sent to him with the deadline of last Friday. He didn't ring up m uh, the clerks of the Select Committee and ask for an extension, um, but he did choose to give his version of events to the Sunday Telegraph. And I think that that was the wrong approach when you have an inquiry of this kind. And, and, and Mr Yates is a very experienced police officer. He's appeared before the committee before. He's asked to appear before the committee. The answer is to reply to letters or come and give evidence rather than give your version of events in this way to a Sunday newspaper. I think it does raise questions about judgment. I realize he wanted to get his version of events out before our session on Tuesday, but I don't think that this is good form from such a senior member of the Metropolitan Police and someone who actually has appeared before us and given testimony about these very matters. What's your reaction to that? Well, I, I think uh, Keith is right. You know, he should be in, appearing in front of Parliament and answering questions, not putting out effectively a press release himself. Yeah, OK. But that, does that imply what he said and what he said in that interview about uh, I think I can use the word just about that on Sunday lunchtime, it being a pretty crap decision that he had taken. Um, does that imply that what he told you at the previous time that he appeared before you may not be entirely um, accurate? Well, what he told us the last time he appeared before us and he asked to come before us was the fact that, uh, in his view, everything had been done properly and that he relied totally on the advice of the Director of Public Prosecutions, that the reason why all this information hadn't come out and hadn't been properly tested was because the advice he'd received from the DPP was the inquiry that was conducted previously by Andy Heyman and Peter Clark and himself, that that had to be dealt with on the basis of narrow legal advice. Whereas what had changed was the DPP was saying in October of last year that it should be wide legal advice. That's why we have all these changes that have occurred. So it is different to what's been said. So should he consider his position? Well, I think we'd like to know exactly what his position is. We can't obviously question him through uh, the Sunday Telegraph. I think he probably needs to come and explain to the committee why he has changed his position. Well, let me ask that same question to David Davis. Well, I don't, that is too early for that decision, but there is a, there's, there's a bigger issue here. I mean, it's, uh, what, what you see from John Yates's comments, but also from the history of this, is syste virtually systemic failures, uh, failures to address this whole series of issues. It goes right back to a sort of obvious question, why in 2003, when uh, Rebecca Wade, I think she was then, said to the DCMS committee, you know, we have paid policemen, they didn't go and say who, because there's no public interest defence for policemen taking a bribe, uh, through to 2006, where it is apparent that every, not pretty much every piece of information that's come out and caused such shock in the last week was actually sitting in bin bags uh, in Scotland Yard. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Yates now saying, well, I'm the Assistant Commissioner, I don't go do that. Well, actually, uh, and the other excuse being... I mean, you're, descri you're describing incompetence on an epic scale. Oh, I'm afraid I am. I'm afraid I am. And, and I, I worry it's wider than this. But let me just finish the, 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 the trail, because you know, Mr. Yates said uh, in the paper this morning, well, I'm the Assistant Commissioner, I don't do this. And, and he also tried to imply that, you know, we were also dealing with serious counter-terrorism issues at the time. Uh, this team was, so we couldn't do it. Well, actually, the budget of the Metropolitan Police is about three billion pounds, a very large number of people. They couldn't find anybody else to go through those documents and see. And of course, it would never have come up either if it had not been a royal uh, bug rather than somebody else. So you've got all these things happening. And I worry too, uh, as you say, it's on an epic scale. It is on an epic scale. I also worry too about the whole approach of uh, the Met in particular, uh, to handling data. I mean, we've seen, yeah. it's not the first time, we had 27,000 documents lost. Remember that? When we had foreign prisoners, we've, we've had problems over DNA handling. Across the board, I begin to worry, when you're given okay. all this evidence and you don't handle it, what are you doing? How worried are you by what seems to be a degree of uh, police corruption? And we've been talking in the, the previous discussion about the sort of uneasy relationship between Murdoch and politicians. You also get the impression that the police were slightly frightened of going too close to Murdoch and News International. Well, I think we need to look at processes. Obviously, as David has correctly said, there's a systemic problem in the way in which this has been conducted. Obviously, we could only do a little 
portion of this, culture, media and sport have concentrated quite rightly on newspapers. We have looked at police involvement. Will you look the at issue, the issue of payments? Well, of course, the issue of payments. Um, I wrote to Rebecca Brooks earlier this year and she said in defence of herself that she knew of no examples of police payments. We now know that this has happened and we will have to follow that trail. At the end of the day, the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition have got to get together and decide on terms of reference. I think that the select committees should be involved in that, those processes and we should make sure it's as wide as possible. We now know there's going to be two inquiries, one specifically about the press, the second about the police investigation. I think it's important that we have a judge May okay. and we get started Let me just ask you this, David Davis, let me just ask you a separate right. point because we've talked a lot about judgment yeah. uh, and errors of judgment. David Cameron appointing Andy Coulson, when you go through the list of Alan Rusbridge, the editor of The Guardian, the deputy editor of The Guardian, Paddy Ashdown, uh, Nick Clegg, Chris Hune, all saying, you know what, be very careful there. And David Cameron saying, no, I'm going ahead with it. Well, I mean, he, he made his judgment on the basis of information we don't have. And I felt a little sorry for him on well, Friday, was it? Because I suspect before he went and did that press conference, he would quite properly um, be given a lot of advice about be careful what you say about Mr. Coulson because he's about to be arrested. As mm -hmm. Keith will know, and I as Shadow Home Secretary in the past have known, you're very careful about what you say about somebody who's in that position, and I'm going to be equally careful today. Yes, but in, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to, but about the... Well, you are, because by implication you are, I'm afraid. Well, no, you can still say that it was an error of judgment to take someone over. Well, we, we don't know. We don't know what the undertakings given were. Well, I don't know the, the extent of the background check that was said to be done. I mean, all those things one, one doesn't know. Uh, and it's very easy, I'm afraid, in this exercise, in, the, in, in, in a week in which the entire evidence has changed. You, you spent a long time um, giving Ivan a lot of trouble earlier because you know, it's a week in which the entire evidence has changed in this matter. Uh, uh, that to, to say, oh, well, you know, why didn't you have hindsight? Uh, that's, that's by the way. And I don't really want to go into issues around Mr. Coulson for simple legalistic reasons. I mean, and, uh, and, and I would, it would be improper to do so. And a very quick final thought from you, Keith Vance. Do you think that the, what will emerge from the rubble of this past week is something better? I hope so. With two parliamentary inquiries, with two public inquiries, hopefully judge-led, we should have a better landscape. The problem is it is going to take some time. And the quicker the Prime Minister appoints the head of the inquiry, leaving okay. the terms of reference to be fashioned perhaps a little bit later, the better. Both of you, thank you very much indeed for thank you. being with us. Thanks so much.